Hello everyone, this is uh, curl 7.76.0 March 31, 2021. I've just pressed the magic pressed the magic buttons. I did a release uh, a short while ago. Um, and here it is. Uh, you might be very impressed by the fine image, but this is me. I'm Daniel Stenberg. I work on curl. I'm I founded the project. I'm the lead developer pretty much. I do a lot of curl these days. <coughs> I work for Wolf SSL where we do curl support and we do TLS support and SSL, whatever you need help with commercially with the curl and the SSL related stuff, get in touch and we'll sort it out. So today I'm going to go through what we've done in 7.76.0, just my order, uh, sort of usual round th run through of numbers, security st stuff, new features, a bunch of fun bug fixes and uh, something about the future. Uh, sort of the regular things. And I'm have, I have this Twitch chat going, so if you have any questions, ask there and we can sort of get it going. So this is release 198, counted from the beginning. So if we stick to the schedule, we'll have 200 in the summer. Fun. <coughs> okay, participation. This time around we had 58 contributors, 34 new pretty much what we're accustomed to by uh, to these days so a lot of people are helping out and it's i think it's awesome 34 new contributors in this cycle 56 days cycle 25 authors uh, wrote um, commits 12 new and we're 872 authors until approaching 900. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, you can see people passing behind me uh, in my video, uh, behind me here, and that's so just an added bonus. So, again, we did this, we have the release cycle and it's 56 days, optimally, that's the, what we're going for, we aim for, and we plan for. So if we do everything correctly, we do it this 56 days, we add up all the days since we started, 8,400 days, and we just turned 23 years old last week. Yay. This time around, we also announced two security advisories. Um, now adding up to one exactly 100 in total since the beginning of time. So let's start out. Uh, CVE numbers are really hard to say and, and remember, but this is CVE 2021-22876. Uh, automatic referrer leaks credentials and it is actually pretty easy to explain in this case because if you use the automatic referrer feature in curl which is a very rare feature because people rarely use it uh, so you can tell curl to insert the referrer header automatically when it follows a redirect so if you go to one url and you tell it tell curl to follow the redirect to another url you can also tell it to add a referrer automatically to the previous URL that you got first. Okay, but if you in if that initial URL you're using credentials in the URL, you know, HTTP colon slash slash username colon password at hostname sort of style. If you do that and follow the redirect, you add the automatic referrer and it will add the credentials in that referrer header. Not very elegant. It's been a problem for a very, very, very long time. As you can see in the in the CVE, um, I think we added it in 2001 or something. It's been around for, for over 20 years, this problem. And of course, nobody reported it until now. And we're awarding $800 to the reporter of this, uh, Victor, excellent report, excellent fix. You can read up the details. I, I read up on the details on the site, of course. And then uh, another one, much more complicated. And and bear with me here. This is somewhat obscure and and um, hard to explain. But this is CVE 2021-22890. So if this is for uh, when you are using an HTTP proxy, which to begin with is not a very common thing. An H sorry, an HTTPS proxy. So not an HTTP proxy, an HTTPS proxy. You're actually communicating with TLS to the proxy and then possibly with TLS uh, through the proxy as well, you know, two layers of TLS. 
and if that till uh, HBS proxy speaks TLS 1.3 and curl is built with OpenSSL, curl can actually confuse or mix up some messages from the proxy believing it comes from the host which uh, well it me it actually and <clears throat> let me uh, I, I will partly blame a really fun API in, in OpenSSL because in OpenSSL when they provide a session uh, ID already from way behind this, they provide it with a callback but with, when the session ID comes in earlier TLS versions it always comes in the handshake you know when you set up the connection the initial handshake but when TLS 1.3 was introduced they postponed the session ticket to after the handshake so now the callback comes at a different time in the setup um, you know steps here so now instead of the callback coming in the handshake as before it now comes after the handshake which surprises curl which didn't really take the proper precautions there so the handshake comes after the setup and then it wrongly assumes that the message comes from the host when it comes from the proxy uh, complicated uh, setup here but you can basically a malicious HTTPS proxy it has to be really malicious you have to trust the proxy and the, the proxy really needs to be set up with a, with a really you know malicious certificate but then the, the proxy can actually man in the middle the connection and it can tell the tell curl to here continue a previous session so you can yeah um it, it is a complicated setup and, and explanation is really hard and and i've tried to detail this in in the documentation or you can read it up in the advisory but if you're the point here is that if you're using an HPS proxy and you're using a curl built with uh, OpenSSL, get the fix or avoid TLS 1.3. Um, yeah, that was fun. Uh, uh, the reporter of this, who, who would probably have gotten a new record amount uh, reward, uh, declined to get any reward at all. So we didn't pay anything for this uh, awesome report. I've asked for this report to get, um, you know, public uh, if, at HackerOne. So once that gets public, it will happen soon. You, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you should go there because there's a full exploit uh, server written, client written to prove this. It was an awesome report and, and, and good discussion there. So, and if you, of course, if you find anything, suspect anything that is security related in curl, you can go here to hackerone.com slash curl, report it, and we will reward you with money if it proves to be an actual security problem. Yes, with paid $800 in, in bug bounties this round then for that initial report as the other reporter didn't want any money. He refused to get it even if I really wanted to pay him <coughs> him i say i don't know if it's in him actually sorry uh, okay that was the two security advisories i probably for most users they're uh, in uh, they're not important because you don't use those features but that might be the most important stuff for this release anyway because they're security related so okay new stuff new tls back and this time i i showed you that image of a rusty car in the beginning that of course was chosen because we now support Russell's as a TLS backend. And Russell's is a Rust written TLS library. And <clears throat> of course, curl supports a lot of TLS backends. This is actually backend number 14 so that you can pick to, to build curl with at, at build time. You can actually build curl with multiple TLS backends at the same time uh, and you can select at runtime which which to enable uh, but in, in this case this is a rust written uh, library that um, they also provide they have actually a separate binding called c rustles crustles i don't know how they pronounce it <laughs> it's really i think they're all hard to pronounce crustles anyway is the c api for rustles and that's the one we're using here in curl and it's being used also i know you can talk to Ising about doing, they're working on that, using it for 
the server side too within Apache. So it's that's certainly something that is um, being worked on a lot and it's coming. So now you can enable this when you build curl. It works. It actually it runs in the CI. It runs all the tests. So it's uh, I think it's fairly solid. Oh, it says crustles. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think already Russell's is hard to say, but Crustles is not easier. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, I guess they like those kind of workplaces. <clears throat> it's there, you can try it out. Um, seems stable and solid, and, and I'm sure we all are. I mean, both we in the Curl project and the Russell's projects are interested in, in feedback if you find any problems or have any issues with this. <clears throat> Exactly, yeah. So, uh, as said in, in the chat here, the, the, the only issue that has been, that is vis visible with Russell is that they, they don't support, I'm not sure how they, uh, if they still that, they don't support uh, IP addresses in the certificate, which uh, I've also complained at them uh, about, because like if you go to HTTPS colon uh, slash slash 1111, which is a legit legitimate uh, site and it has a certificate for that IP address. Yeah, Russell's had, had problems with that. Yes, in, in certificate verification because they don't, they initially a few months ago at least, they didn't support that uh, particular uh, subject alt name type for, for the IP address instead of uh, hosting. But it doesn't matter. They will get around to fixing that if, if they haven't already. <coughs> In curl, we this release we added the we added actually three new command line options. So now we have 240 in total. We added first I added this one, which is a um, dash dash fail with body. It's a little bit subtle, but it's a variation of the dash dash fail, or uh, often used as but just dash f. With ma it makes curl return a failure. Uh, return error pretty much if uh, the an HTTP server is returns um, a 400 return code bit pretty much or you know whatever 400 or higher so uh, you could for example get it to return a failure if you get a 404 back or 40 whatever but the regular fail option the dash dash fail it it will discard the body and return as soon as possible and just no it didn't work but this option is just subtle change it, it'll return the same kind of error but with, it will also store the body so you can actually g get that 404 to return an error and store the um, error message or the HTML for that 404 little thing but it's been requested for a long time uh, so I finally sort of just made it possible to do that and <clears throat> we added to two dough options do being DNS over HTTPS. So previously the dash dash insecure option sort of was inherited for you for the do request. So you know do as as a concept is that it makes a separate or, or initial HTTPS request to the name server, right? To resolve the host name. But that's a separate server and a separate HTTPS connection. So when you're using insecure or do insecure you can actually now make sure that you you can treat the do server as i mean you can do that as an insecure connection and you without doing the main transfer insecure you know anyway you can sp you shouldn't use them either one of them but now you can at least make sure that just one of them is insecure and the other one isn't or vice versa Okay, and then we added the support for the even more obscure option, which is the do cert status, which the um, that's basically OCSP stapling. So you just make sure even better that um, the server is actually fine still right now when you're communicating with it. And that also previously was inherited from the regular transfer and now it's a separate option. <coughs> So three new options and, and um, fun things. Uh, and uh, of course, the ever-growing uh, number of variables for the dash dash write out option. Dash dash write out is also often used as um, just dash w. And then the dash w option has a lot of variables for uh, that, you know, K 
can extract information metadata from the previous transfer and in this version we add a new variable called referrer uh, of course you can see the relation here to the security advisor we mentioned before so it can actually you, you can actually get uh, curl to tell you which referrer it inserted in, in the connection uh, in the request as a just as a convenience because it's handy and it was also handy to have there to we so that we could write a test for that fix we did anyway you can should read up on it we have a quite a large number of variables now for the write out option and i'm sure there will be more in the future because this is an uh, interesting area to to um, provide information to users or users can extract more data than um, in a pretty cool way i think okay so into the libcurl stuff that we've done new in this release of course related to what i just mentioned the command line options to to be able to provide the command line those command, new command line options we have added new options to zip to libcurl these two in particular which i which is the two options that we you can enable disable certificate verification and in this case then the do server certificate verification and for historic reasons which uh, which is a little bit weird but we're sticking to what we've done before we have two different ones one that verifies the host name and one that verifies the signature pretty much so you, you can uh, alter them independently and we have them for for the regular server we have them for HTTPS proxies and now we have them for the DOE server so the, they're all independent of each other and that's the verify status which is the um, OCSP stapling thing I think yes okay and then there's some uh, more things two more things that we did in changes uh, feature changes in this release first we made sure that you can do multiple dash b options or arguments on the command line option uh, command line so that if you want to set more cookies or read cookies from multiple files you can actually use dash b dash b dash b dash b and it'll read more or, or set more cookies which was just we should have done that a long time ago we should always have done that but apparently we at least fixed it now <laughs> <coughs> and we have added support for more authentication over uh, this Scram SHA-1 and uh, Scram SHA-256 uh, things over the mail protocols. Not really my ex my particular areas, so um, read up on it if you want to know more. But there is support now and you, use, uh, you need the libgsasl uh, uh, library to, to get that power into your curl. And we count 130 bug fixes in this release which is uh, that's a round average pretty much what we've um, done before pre a little bit more than the previous release but uh, in the same ballpark and it, hmm, it goes up and down depending on how big and small fixes we have and so on but uh, let me get into a few of those at least some of them that i've i've selected to highlight you can read up all of them in, in the change log and you can read the, the git logs of course but here are some some fun things that we did uh, i in the previous release in 775.0 i announced that we added the create file mode option to come uh, to the curl command line i think that was the only command line we had the uh, option we added in that version and it was broken <laughs> uh, were not very very good of me but anyway i fixed it now pretty much I forgot uh, some little part that actually used the option so I set it all up to work but it never actually set it internally now it does so and now it's actually been verified properly to work too uh, silly but true okay so now also another thing more dough things when you set up a little bit complicated the resolve list there's an there's an option to the curl command line called dash dash resolve it's also curl opt resolve when you do it um, with libcurl it's pretty much a way to pre-populate the internal dns cache with host name to ip address uh, mappings so that you can say hey example.org is actually 127.001 so that you know remap host names to new ip addresses that they wouldn't do if they would resolve 
normally. And now this list is also used for not only for the main transfer, but it's also used for the dough transfer, which is, I think, what most users actually assumed it did. And now it does. I This is a not uh, supposedly not a user visible change, but I wanted to highlight it anyway, because it's a pretty big refactor we did uh, internally. It affected uh, um, uh, quite a lot of code. So we previously, or rather internally in curl, we have transfer objects and we have connection objects. So a transfer can use a connection or a transfer can actually then alternate between many connections, but, uh, and a connection can be used by many transfers. If it's used multiplex, for example, it could be hundreds of transfers using the same connection. Um, so, and um, now I've um, made sure that there's no pointer back from connections to the transfers. That's the data here, connection to the transfers. So it's a bit of complicated and it re really isn't user visible. So it's, but if you're, if you're reading curl code, you'll see that this is a pointer that's no longer there. Now we always have to go from the transfer to the connection. There's no way to come back to the transfer from the connection because the connection can be used by many transfers. So that would always a error prone operation. And it also is, it caused a lot of internal confusions and, and bugs over the years. So now we remove that possibility of a bug and added new ones instead. <coughs> Open SSL version three is something they're working on um, in, uh, in in Git and they have alpha versions out there. Uh, they're del they've delayed their beta versions for a very long time and they're, they keep on changing the API. Uh, slightly, so now they've added cons to a few more uh, functions, and uh, we've adapted to that. So you can st now still wor build with what is to become the OpenSSL version three, or rather, if you go, if you build OpenSSL from their Git master, you should be able to build curl just fine with it. So we're trying to keep up with their changes. And here I, I've just highlighted a particular Git log message here. I, uh, you know. Configure is a, a tool that's been a bit dormant in development for a long time. So uh, the version 2.69 that is used in many places, it was released in 2012. And now recently development of Configure and that's called AutoConf uh, and some other uh, of those related tools has restarted and they released 2.70 and 2.71 uh, over the last year, I think. And they've now deprecated a lot of macros and they changed a lot of things. So if you build, uh, if you r ran AutoConf, one of those newer on, on curls configure, it would yell warnings for a few minutes. And I've tried to adjust to that and adapt to that. So now you should be able to use later conf uh, AutoConf versions without all those warnings. <clears throat> I don't, I still, this particular release that I've uploaded just, you know, two hours ago, I, I built that configure with 2.69. So I've not bumped my local uh, autoconf version yet, but I, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. I'm using Debian SID here. So I'm just using basically what they're shipping actually. So once it's mature enough for them, I think I will do my releases with that version, whatever they go with. Okay. So uh, curl is 23 years old. We've supported HTTP since the beginning, but we still do things with HTTP, of course. <clears throat> we, a while ago, two years ago, three, I don't remember anymore. I added, you know, I converted a lot of things internally to do a, a, mo a unified buffer handling, growing buffer system. We, I call it dyn buff, as in dynamic buffers within curl. So pretty much everything that has a buffer that can grow in, in curl uses this, which is a way to make sure that we, you know, we reduce the number of uh, places in the code. We do realloc and, and stuff like that. So a few places that do those sensitive buffering, buffer handling things to make the code more easy to read, easy to test and safer. And then 
in all places internally now we have a maximum size of all those buffers so no none of the buffers can you know grow indefinitely they all have a fixed size that that is the max so if you hit the max something is wrong and it'll return error blah 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 everything is wrong go home just as a precaution to avoid mistakes or malicious use and and stuff like that um it helps it also helps against a whole bunch of potential integer overflow problems right if strings can go really really large and then on 32-bit platforms blah 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 and two gigabytes and all that but and, but anyway i then s said that how how big http requests do we really need to support in curl i figured 128 kilobytes would be big enough right nobody would send headers larger than that or the entire http request it is actually all headers in the request but of course this release or this cycle then someone actually came up he actually sent a 300k header in his request and he figured that he had a legitimate reason to do that i really can't question that and it used to work with curl before i added it's this artificial limit and since i'm only doing this to prevent malicious use and, and, and mistakes i saw no big reason not to just bump the internal limits and now the limit is one megabyte instead just to be able to catch mistakes maybe we need to bump this again if someone else has even larger headers uh, or requests but it's one megabyte now um, <clears throat> another little thing that y if you read libcurl code you will see this change that with http more or less by accident it worked even uh, when we did when we do authentication over HTTP, we should use credentials based on the transfer, not based on the connection, because HTTP is really stateless. Well, it tries to be stateless. So when, when for example, you can use the same connection and you can mix uh, request using different credentials over the same connection, just different uh, transfers. Well, it is the maximum request size, just the headers in your outgoing request. So that's pretty much, you know, get post and the URL and the request headers. It's not the body of the request. It's just the headers. So you, you should be aware that it's really, really rare to have an HTTP request is typically, you know, uh, in the few hundred bytes area. That's more the regular size. So this is, uh, one megabytes is extremely unusually big <clears throat> anyway so http the credential so uh, this is just a cleanup just because when we change code in the future I, I i was a bit scared that we might introduce problems just because we got the credentials from the wrong anyway uh, another bug that we found <coughs> was that you know we have this um, you can limit the rate limit this um, the speed really how fast curl will send or receive data and you said it i will own, let curl use you know 2k per second or 40 megabyte per second or whatever you can set the speed limit don't go over this and in some instances rather if you provide a string for curl to send in a post for example and you provide a really big string huge and you set a really low speed for it to allow to use in in sending <coughs> curl would still send that huge string at once and then impose the speed limit which <laughs> was a bit annoying so if you send 200k and you set a speed limit of 2k it would send 200k at once and then wait for uh, 200 well 100 seconds and then continue was uh, surprising uh, and uh, wrong but now i at least it does it much better in, in this version it's a very niche use case because i don't think that is used uh, very much http2 continues to be an interesting protocol and of course http we have uh, bugs and so of course we have bugs and fixes in http2 we found a case where the connection when the connection went down um there should be a, a connection for HTTP2 then with streams over it. We could end up in cases where we would find the end of those streams, but we wouldn't report an error just that, ooh, the stream is done without really noticing 
the bad dance in that it was actually prematurely closed without the end stream message. Now we detect that better and we report error properly. We had another race condition when we could actually send could do send data actually post pretty much uh, over HTTP2 and we in some cases it's really hard to reproduce but in some cases cases curl would actually send the last byte but still think it had more bytes to send which would make it pretty much just wait forever until the server closes the connection and return a failure while it actually had already sent everything and should just be done with it and be happy <coughs> uh, another little um, thing um, yeah, <laughs> and this is kind of annoying so there's this message in HP2 that says force downgrade to 1.1 we can do one uh, HP2 so and, and curl acknowledges the, the, um, the request so it and goes back and it sets internally try 1.1 instead of 2 but due to some circumstances at least in in this uh, case it would then go back and try a new request but it would then you know go through the regular connection reuse logic and the connection reuse logic would see oh there's already a connection live from this host go with that instead and that was, of course, the old HTTP2 <laughs> connection that it just was told that it couldn't use. So it would go to the HTTP2 again and use it, and it would be refused again. And in most cases, it would um, then, in the second case, the connection had already closed because that's what the server had done. So then it would work. It would do a third time, and then it would work, which is, was uh, uh, a little bit amusing but uh, silly and then and now it doesn't do that. Now it actually, when it says don't use HTTP2 here, it will actually mark that connection for closure. So we won't use it again. So the connection reuse logic will not get the same thing again. So yeah, it's fun all the time here <laughs> in, in the curl factory. And FTP, the gold, uh, good old protocol, it uh, never goes away in curl. Um, <clears throat> in curl, uh, here's the fun thing: the FTP is is really an Asian protocol. the 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 main RFC for FTP is nine five nine, I believe. It's from I think it's from nineteen eighty something. It's really really old, and it doesn't even support this command called size. The size command is a command to ask the server for the size of a particular file. Um, you don't have to know a lot about uh, FTP, but uh, but it's pretty important actually to know the size of the remote file because that's one of the only ways to know that you actually get the full file when you when you get a remote FTP file. Otherwise, you don't really know that you got it. it it'll just get whatever and it closes it when it's, it says it's done, which could be prematurely or not. You don't know. So anyway, since it didn't exist in the initial FTP protocol spec some servers there and they still actually exist they don't support this um, command so th it fails when you when curl tries to use size it'll you know return error and <laughs> but there's a difference of course by between returning error because it doesn't support the size command or returning an error because the file doesn't exist that you try to size so <laughs> So yeah, I've been struggling with, uh, with this recently because for, for some reason, well, there, there was a reason, but I, I won't get into that now because I, this was a few releases ago. I actually started to make size, when size file fails because the file doesn't exist, um, it would return failure uh, earlier than it did before in curl. So yeah, you know, the file doesn't exist, uh, bail out. And that now turned out was a regression because I then broke when you would do resumed FTP upload because then if you want to resume an upload you know upload file A from here to the server then of course you have to check first how big is it on the server and if you haven't uploaded it at all it doesn't even exist so then the size command will return a failure and then we know oh it's zero bytes we can continue uh, or upload from the beginning and I have broken that logic someone used that in a test case figured it out reported it and I fixed it it um 
an interesting thing was that I, you know, I, I, we have these torture tests uh, that run tests and insert failures, or rather make a lot of functions, function calls return failures, like malloc, uh, fopen, a lot of function calls that, you know, in, can potentially return error errors uh, eventually or sometimes and I have these tor torture tests make sure that they do often and so we rerun the test a lot of times and re return failures from different function calls and in this particular case I actually made it I, we made uh, when you do FTP done which is the internal function for when a FTP transfer is complete do is before the transfer perform is during the transfer done is after the transfer uh, if that would fail uh, it would actually really leak a little bit of memory and i think this is an old thing but I, it's also interesting that we haven't found it before possibly have changed something that made this logic happen but um, it was a bit surprising so that was some of the fun bug fixes we did this time we did uh, 120 more or so, so we'll go read up on them if you're interested in the details. And if you still suffer from bugs, report them, because uh, we like fixing bugs. The next release is most likely going to be called 77.0. A lot of sevens. Um, I say so because you know we key, we bump the minor number when we add features. In, um, so and there I think there's a good chance that we will add features even in the next release cycle. In the curl development cycle, we have these eight weeks between um, uh, versions and we have pretty much the beginning of the cycle open for fixes and the second half of the cycle, we only do bug fixes. So if everything is fine on, on Monday, we will um, open the release window and uh, sorry the feature window again for new stuff to get merged and we have a bunch of things and I'll get to a few of them uh, in a second or rather here perhaps so we have a few things that are coming and, and some of the things that have appeared recently that are in I think all of these are in github as per requests in various states um, uh, let me see yes uh, I'm planning at, I'm really, really uh, removing the last traces of being able to set SSL v2 and SSL v3 protocols in curl. And this isn't as dangerous or, or shocking as it may sound, as you know, what are these protocols still there? But, and really, in, in practical terms, they're not there because uh, there's no TLS libraries left anywhere that actually still have these ones uh, supported by default anyway. So you really have to make an effort to get the support for these enabled. And I'm just thinking that it's about time that we also follow that and just remove the support for those in, in curl, pretty much because they're virtually never used. And they, if they should be used, we probably make users a service to, to really highlight that you shouldn't use them anyway, even if you can really make an effort to use them you shouldn't because they're insecure unsafe and been deemed unusable for a very very long time and actually just last week or so there was this new rfc published that says you should not use tls 1.1 or tls 1.0 either so you should use for anything that cares about safety and security you should use tls 1.2 or higher nothing lower we want to make sure that we enable HSTS support in the build by default. There's a peer for that. I think there shouldn't be any uh, things standing in the way. That That's the secure transfer thing that makes curl able to store and remember that it should use HTTPS first uh, in the future, you know, or X number of seconds into the future. We can also discuss how to do TLS 1.0 and 1.1, of course, but <clears throat> I think curl is we're we're really conservative when it comes to uh, cutting off old stuff. So maybe I'm not sure we're we're really at a point where we will drop TLS 1.0 and 1.1 because I think we have legacy users that are stuck on that. But sure, I think we 
at some point we will start to discuss that on or how to handle that or possibly how to raise defaults and maybe force users to to you know have to use a, a particular option to actually still accept the older ones but we haven't had that discussion yet there's a, a new feature being proposed called curl opt stream window size which is um, a bit uh, strange maybe but it's um, a way to set the window size for streams when doing stream based pro uh, protocols it's primarily http2 now pr probably http3 as well and uh, the idea here is that by why would you care about the stream size well the thing is when when we do st streaming you know many streams over a single connection and you want to and, and you want to have support for pausing one of those streams the other streams can continue but there's no way for us to really halt data in transit for one of those streams so we actually need to cache that entire stream when you post it well we can say don't send anything more but it could be already a, a window full size of data in transit to us so we need to be able to cache that um, on the behalf of the application so we sometimes cache uh, up to a full window size number of bytes in curl when when people are using pausing and streaming protocols this is just a fact of 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 the api and the protocol's behavior and by setting by allowing an application to tweak this window size they can then also indirectly affect the worst case caching that or saving of data that curl needs to do uh, Mark is working on waking up um, curl uh, with uh, the multi weight the curl multi poll function with WinSock events instead of the made up socket pair implementation since Windows doesn't support socket pair there's a fun and interesting uh, work in progress for async get adder info uh, and uh, I think it's interesting because it provides asynchronous name resolving support which you say oh doesn't curl already do that and sure curl already does that but the support for um the po the support for async get to do asynchronous name results in curl today you either use c ares you build curl to use c ares or you build curl to use a threaded uh, resolver backend and threads are somewhat you know limited in what you do so because if you do a lot of parallel requests you get a lot of threads and waiting for uh, threads that uh, time out is a bit annoying so there's always a little bit of nuisance and problems with threads um, <clears throat> and in this case the async get adder info is, which is a i think it's a glibc function so it's very uh, it's limited in platform availability of course but using this you can get asynchronous get uh, name resolves without threads using native get other info so I, I would say it's a combination of, of everything that could be attractive for a bunch of users um, so it's the pretty much the um, fourth uh, way to resolve names or something uh, right, and there is a support for disabling order credentials with S channel, uh, which is just a way to make sure that we don't try to authenticate or send client uh, certificate stuff uh, when built to use S channel, which is the Windows uh, TLS backend. Uh, subtle, but uh, you can read up on the details, and it's for better security, pretty much. Some of the things that we've had and mentioned before in as coming pending work still I think we has, might have sort of fallen a little bit uh, uh, in, uh, sort of asleep is this option for sharing the known hosts handle between transfers known host is used for SSH transfers so SFTP and SCP with curl we have a uh, pending HTTP 3 fixes and some of them seem a bit stale but I think we we have several issues filed on HTTP 3 so we need to get back to fixing HTTP 3 things but there are at least problems to address and uh, I actually oh right I actually saw that this pull request 
was actually closed i think yesterday by the submitter so maybe no gemini support uh, coming in the next release at least i'm not sure exactly where that is going gemini is a new protocol sort of gopher like gopher hp 0.9 like very simple they they've sort of done that on purpose they want to go back to doing a simpler protocol uh, on purpose it uses tls still and they they don't have cookies they want to do client certificates so it's a it's, it's a fun protocol but the, the pr is now closed maybe it'll come back we'll see the next release i say uh, will be called 777.0 uh, hopefully at least unless we did something wrong we, we will do a patch release instead and maybe release it earlier <coughs> Uh, so we'll do that uh, on May 26, as, uh, uh, if the plan sticks. That's eight weeks from now. So if if uh, we don't did we didn't we didn't do anything terribly wrong this release, we will open the feature um, window on Monday, merge a lot of things, and move on. <coughs> and if you go to this URL, which is using the old host name. Um, you will see the the sort of the coming pending release notes for that release which right now i think still shows the previous release but it will be updated uh, along the way so you can always go there and, and check what's coming or what is pending for the next release uh, and jim here mentioned correctly the curl up event which is going to happen before this release because on if you go to that um, URL that he just mentioned, let me see if I can show you that. Well, Curl App is um, our annual Curl Hackers, Developers, Users uh, conference, and we are, of course, doing it online only this year, too, due to the pandemic. We've done it in person before. It's been great fun and uh, really something to experience if you're into curl curl development or or just if you're just a curl fan so curl up 2021 is going to happen on may 9th so just head up to the maybe the easiest is to go go to the github.com slash curl slash curl dash up and read that wiki page there will be more details and if you follow me on twitter for example or read the curl website there will be more details about this coming up it is an online event only so you can just join it you don't have to say a word if you don't want to you can just participate read uh, 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 and follow the uh, conference discussions and the plan is to provide a bunch of pre-recorded talks and presentations ahead of time and uh, then and we watch them ahead of time and then we discuss them and what we learn and what we feedback uh, at that particular event in on may 9 and it's a little bit put on a european time zone we will start at 11 utc which is 1 p.m central european pretty early uh, morning uh, in the u.s anyway th that was about what uh, i had for the release this time that is 7.77.0 there will be more uh, release videos going on in, in the future there will be more live streamed curl development with me also coming up and uh, i'm if, you, if you've seen a lot of slides says at bagder that's my twitter handle you can follow me there for more curl yapping and we are in the pound curl irc channel on freenode always so join us there to talk even more curl bye for now